Bible say, right? What is the Bible? What does the Bible teach us about treating, how to treat a king? We see it here in Isaiah. We see it here in verse 3. And listen, the first thing that I would give us, and when you go to kind of, kind of training yourself on how to you know, relate to a king or how to act in the presence of the king, the first thing that I would say we need to learn is we need to honor the king's presence. We need to honor the king's presence. Now, this is the first thing I want to suggest to us. This is the first thing I want us to think about. We need to honor the king's presence. Look at what the angels are doing in verse 3. It says, and once, and one cried to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Notice what they're saying. They're acknowledging the greatness of God. They're acknowledging the holiness of God. Holy, holy, holy. This is deep right here. Now, uh, in the Hebrew language or the Jewish people, they would emphasize their communication by repeating themselves. Now, this, this teaches us that God is a three-time holy God. Now, this is the only attribute of God in the sacred scripture that is elevated to the third degree. Holy, holy, holy. No other attribute of God is elevated to the third degree. In other words, God is not just holy and he's not just holy, holy. He is holy, holy, holy. And they're acknowledging his presence. They're, they're, they're reverencing his presence. They're, they're honoring him because he is the king. He's the king. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. I found another scripture that teaches us how to treat a king. In Hebrews 11, 28 through 29, listen to what it says. Now remember... I'm helping us to move into 2019. I'm, I'm preparing our hearts to move into 2019 because I believe that God is going to do some mighty things in your life. I believe that God wants to do some mighty things in your family life. I believe that God wants to do some mighty things in your marriage. And the way that he's going to do it is through his presence. Amen. God operates and he, he operates through his presence. And so the first thing that we need to understand um, is that we need to honor the presence of the Lord. Someone say amen to that. Amen. Listen to Hebrews 11. It says, since we have a kingdom, nothing can destroy. Let us please God by serving him with thankful hearts and with holy fear and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. Notice it said how we, should, how we are to approach God, how we are to reverence God. It says we are to reverence him with holy fear. Why? Because our God is a consuming fire. When the prophet looked up to God on his throne, the Bible says the throne was consumed with fire. It's consumed with fire. So we are to approach our king with honor. We are to approach our king, approach our king with reverence. We are to approach our king by recognizing who he is. Don't lose sight of who God is. Before he was your friend, he is your king. Now, how does this play out practically in our life, right? How does this play out? Let me, let me give you some thoughts to think about on how this plays out practically in our life and in our worship and in our gathering together. Now, remember, I'm preparing us for 2019. I'm kind of steering up your heart to get you to think about some things. So how, how does this honor work out in our gatherings? How does, it, how does it work out when we come together? Let me give you some thoughts. So number one, listen to this. Listen to this. Be on time for worship. Be on time for worship. Think about this. I want you to think about this. We worship on, at the Paramount campus at 1015 and 1230 every Sunday. 1015 and 1230. Listen, I want you to put this in your heart. I want you to consider that your divine appointment with your king. I want you to consider 1015 and 12, or 1230, your divine appointment with your king. This is the time where God is gathering his people. He's been gathering his people at this on Sundays for 2,000 years. This is the time where we worship him corporately. This is the time where we study his word corporately. This is our divine appointment with our king. I know if the mayor of Los Angeles called me up and said, I, I need to meet you at Tuesday at 12 o'clock, guess what time I'm going to be there? I'm going to be there at 1130. 
How much more should we treat our king? Someone say amen to that. Amen. Let me give you another thought. Let me give you another thought. Fix your attention on God. When, when we gather here as a, as a family, as the royal family of God, don't let nothing distract you. Don't let nothing distract you. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1 says, guard your steps when you come into the house of the Lord, or of God. Guard your steps. You can't just come into the house of the Lord any type of way you want to. He says, guard your steps when you come into the house of the Lord. Go near to listen. Go near to listen. So that's focus, right? Listen, this is your divine appointment with your king. He's coming to speak to you. He's coming also to hear you. Let, let's, let's fix our attention on our king. Here's the last thought I want to give you. Here's the last thought. Don't wander in and out of service. Be still. Someone say, be still. Let me remind you, my brothers and sisters, listen to this. As Christians, we believe that this here right here that I got in my hand, we believe. Listen to this. And all those are watching online, you need to look at this too. Listen, we believe that this is the word of the king. We believe that this is the word of the king. We believe that God loved us enough to leave us his word. And this word is hot off the press. This word could heal you. It could deliver you. It could sanctify you. This word could catapult you into 2019. So there's nothing that the enemy wants to do than distract you from getting this word. The, the, the devil is like, oh, uh, I lost the fight of you coming here, but I'm sure going to distract you when you're here because I don't want you to get on fire with this word. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2 says this. It says, these are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. My brothers and sisters, you know, I celebrate that we have a lot of new Christians here. And we're praying that more and more people are going to give their lives to the Lord. And I have a responsibility to teach you that this is not some, some people magazine. This is not some L.A. newspaper. This here that I got in my hand is the word of the living king. And it's breathed by the Holy Ghost. And it will help us. It will help us. So we got to stay focused. Now, now why do we need... Why are we talking about all this honoring the presence of the king? Why, why so much about this honoring the presence of the king? The reason is, my brothers and sisters, is because about a year ago, maybe two years ago, the Lord put it in my heart that we, Chapel of Change, by the way, Chapel of Change is not a place, it's a people. And God put it in my heart. He says, we are a host for the presence of God. In other words, we are, a, we are a people in whom God has designated to demonstrate his presence. And we want to be inviting to his presence. We, wanna, we, 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 we need the presence of the Lord. Without the presence of our king, no one will be saved. Without the presence of our king, no one will be healed. Without the presence of our king, no one will be delivered. God has chosen us to house his presence in this generation, my brothers and sisters. And we need to guard it. We need to guard his presence because if his presence never shows up, then we're just here for religion. And I don't want to just be playing out religion. I want to be basking in the presence of God. There's too many devils that are trying to stop me. Too many devils trying to get in the way. Too many devils trying to get in the way of my family for me not to have the presence of God. And my brothers and sisters, let me talk like family for a second. For all those who call Chapel of Change uh, your home, listen, the Lord is sending broken, deeply broken people to us. I've been, I, I, I've been in the presence of mothers whose daughters were murdered right here. I had to tell a 13-year-old boy that his dad was murdered. I, I've been exposed right here, right here. God is sending broken, deeply broke. And I'm not talking about people that are just cussing or smoking a cigarette. I'm talking about deeply broken stuff that I have no strength within ourselves to fix it. We have no wisdom in ourselves to fix it. We need the presence of God. We need the presence of God. And if the presence of God leaves us, if it doesn't show up, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with the mother whose marriage is broken and she's trying all her hardest to keep her family together? We have nothing to offer. 
This is why it's so important, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to go into 2019, may we honor the presence of the Lord. May we guard the presence of the Lord. May we cherish the presence of the Lord because I really believe the best is yet to come. I really believe that thousands of people are going to surrender their life to the Lord. I really believe that the king wants into our situation and our marriages and our lives more than ever. 2019, I'm going to end with this. 2019, I want to let you know that the king wants in. He wants in. He wants in. In Psalms 24, verse 9, it says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Listen, the King wants in. He wants into this church. He wants into your heart. He wants into your marriages. He wants into every decision you make in 2019. The King wants in in will you let him in and when he comes in will you honor his presence will you guard his presence will you protect his presence